Hey everybody, how you doing this week? What I've got for you is something really interesting. We're going to do the true detective effect. So this is a double exposure effect inside of Photoshop. And this effect was made wildly popular by the show True Detective. So what we're going to do for this effect is we're going to take two photographs and in effect we're going to use some blending modes and some masks and we're going to blend these photos together to create this cool piece of art known as double exposure. It's not new, it's been around for ages for yonks and eons. Uh, basically it started out where you would have a camera and you would take an exposure and then without winding the film forward, if you remember film, you take another photo over the top exposing the same frame twice. This is really where this came from. It's been kind of uh, jazzed up a little bit now when we're doing the digital version of it because we can use layer masks and we can do some really cool and creative things with it. I'm also going to show you some awesome coloring effects and some different things like that. So let's jump on in and do this effect right now. All right, so we're going for the true detective look, the double exposure look inside of Photoshop. So this can be used for a number of different images, but what we're gonna do is we wanna start with two images. So here we go, we've got one of a guy and one of a factory here. I grabbed these from Adobe Stock. Um, I've actually got links underneath where you can see the written tutorial, as well as links to actually download uh, the watermarked versions of these that you can follow along with if you like. All right, so what we've got is essentially, we've got a guy here that I needed to find with a loose tie a uh, good jaw there and a suit jacket. This is very similar to what you'll see to the opening credits on the hit TV show True Detective. And then we want to put something kind of industrial inside. So I found this one here of the factory and the smoke and these are going to combine well. So the first thing we want to do is we want to combine both of these into the same photograph. So I'm just going to click and drag this. Notice as I go up to the tab, the new one opens and then I can just go into the middle and release and it'll drop it in the middle. So we can see we've got the two photographs on top of each other in one document now. So what I'm doing is actually using a Wacom Cintiq. So I, um, I do have the advantage of having the pressure sensitivity and a nice pen to work with this. Um, obviously, you can follow along using your finger on a trackpad, a mouse, whatever you like. So anyway, so what we want to do now is we want to actually cut out our guy here. So we're going to just grab right now the quick selection tool. So let's grab that quick selection. And then I'm just going to click and drag in here or just drag with my walk on. Notice it's getting really funky and weird. That's because I've got the wrong layer selected. So let me hit Control D to deselect. And now I'm going to drag in the right layer. Notice you get a much better selection. So I'm just going for a rough selection around here. So just kind of clicking and dragging over here. Let's get this somewhat accurate. And I'm just going to kind of grab this up the top here. Getting close, let's get these ears. Grab the second ear. Now this doesn't have to be perfect because we're not really doing a, a perfect extraction at this point. All we're doing is just getting it good enough to kind of get the silhouette because that's what we're really going to be using. So this is looking pretty good. At the bottom it's not quite there. We can hit the Alt key or the Option key to take away from a selection like that. Although we're actually going to end up cropping out the bottom part anyway so it doesn't matter. So we're looking pretty close. Now let's uh, move on our refine edge and clean this up a little bit. So you're going to go up to the top here, see where it says refine edge. Click on there and I actually want to view this on white. You can see under the view here, you can go under and look at different uh, styles there. I have another video uh, that you can check out, another tutorial which shows more about refine edge and extracting images. Actually, I've got a few of those on the Photoshop Cafe uh, channel, so just check those out. So what we really want to do though is we want to get a nice little edge around here. So if I click on show radius, you can see that's the edge. So we don't want this too wide. And uh, notice I've got Smart Radius turned on. And that will actually keep it a little bit better under control. So I like this nice thin edge like that because that's going to give me a nice crisp selection. So I'm going to turn this off. And it's not bad, but just around the hair here, we could clean that up a little bit. So I'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger using the right bracket key. And notice that brush is selected by default. And I'm just going to draw around there quickly just roughly around there and then release that. Notice we get a much better selection there on the hair. I've got the smoothness turned up a little bit to about four. You could turn that down if you wanted. Um, in fact, it looks pretty good there turned down. Um, turn it up if, it, if the edges look just a little rough and you want to clean them up. If there's other edges you want to clean up, just go around those with the brush, but I think that's looking pretty awesome. And we can also look at it here, black on white. We can see what it's going to look like as a mask. I think that's looking pretty awesome. So the important thing you want to do now, let's just go back there, 
is turn on here new mask with layer a new layer of layer mask make sure that's turned on and then what it'll do is when we click OK this will pop this onto its own layer and hide the background so there we go we've got this nice transparency to work with underneath so this is essentially what we're going to be doing so now let's open up our next layer on top so we can see that select the layer and now we're just going to drag it into position so I'm just going to grab the move tool hit the V key or select up there for move and now we can just drag this up to the top all right so that's more or less you know what we want to work with maybe go up a little bit higher and what we're going to do now is we're just going to crop this down to the area we're actually going to work with so I'm going to grab the crop tool you can actually just hit the C for crop or grab the crop tool there and what we're going to do is we're going to go up and crop it just to about the shoulders here and I'm just going to go down a little bit so you can see the loose tie and the reason I'm doing this is if you look at the art from True Detective you'll see that's about where they're cropping it now one important thing is this delete uh, crop pixels turn that off make sure it's not selected or it will crop this and you'll lose all this area by turning this off it means it will constrain this document to this size but all this image area will still be here if we want to use it later so I'm gonna hit enter and now it's gonna crop it down I'm gonna hit control 1 to zoom all the way in so you can see or control or command 0 to make it fit the screen so there we go we've got it right there looking awesome so what we want to do is if you look underneath here we've got this transparency under here and we want to merge these two images together so let's get into the fun stuff what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this layer on and now we're going to move in between the two while holding down the alt or the option key notice when we do this you'll see the little bracket there with a square on it that little arrow click on there and then what it does is actually clips this area inside so this is a non-destructive way of clipping it uh, if we had done a selection or a mask we couldn't move this or use it later but now we can actually move this around and this will stay constrained within that space in fact while we're doing that why don't we resize this because I kind of like this mostly it's looking pretty good there but I like to make it maybe just a little bit smaller so I'm just gonna hit the control T for free transform and every command T on Mac and then if we hold the shift key now and go into the corner I can drag and I can shrink this down so what we're doing is we're just looking for a slightly better fit here I like the way the smoke goes across the top I think that's kind of cool and fun um, and I like the way that chimney kind of ends here so I'm just gonna hit enter now to apply the selection so now we've got this sitting on top and we can do some different things with it in a minute so what we want to do though is notice this is all color and if you actually look at the effect it's more of a monotone uh, effect so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do that right now so I'm gonna go to the very bottom I'm gonna select here the bottom layer and then click a new layer and what it does is it creates a blank layer so rather than having this transparency I want to fill it for background give it a little bit of color on there so we're just gonna click here on the foreground color and I'm gonna grab a yellow and just kind of move up here in fact I'm gonna give it just a touch more green and uh, let's just play around with that about there is pretty close and I'm just gonna now fill it with that color so I'm gonna hit the alt or the option key and the backslash key at the same time and what that does is that fills with the foreground color and notice now we've got that color over everything so this is our base color but so far you know the backgrounds nicely filled in but what about the top we really want to put some color in here so what we're gonna do is just duplicate this layer and the easiest way to do it is to grab the layer there and just drag it into the new layer icon and it'll make a copy the other way you could do it is with the keyboard you could cut Control J or Command J and that'll copy it and then just drag it to the top notice it hides everything don't panic because all we want to do is use the color from this we want to hide everything else and just use the color so we're gonna to go to the blend mode go down to color and notice now everything's got a little bit more of a monochromatic look so we didn't have to go in and convert to black and white and waste a lot of time doing stuff like that that we don't need to do so we're just going to focus on getting the best result in the minimum amount of time all right so let's go down to our layer now so we've got the two layers on top they are clipped but we want to see a little bit more blending we want to see a little more action happening here so we're going to change the blending mode of this to lighten so click on the blend mode go down to lighten and release and notice now the two layers are starting to merge together a little bit 
Now there's something that we can do to make these merge a little better. Because we've got these areas here where there's nothing really happening. And I'd love this to match the background to kind of hide things a little bit. So what we're going to do is with our top layer selected, layer 1, I'm going to open up levels. I'm not going to do an adjustment layer. I'm going to apply this adjustment directly onto this image layer right now. So hit Control L or Command L for levels and our levels will pop up. Notice this little gap here. This is showing that there's no true whites in here. The transparent area would actually be rendered as white. So what we want to do is pull that over and notice as we do that, it brightens up that area of the image. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into our midtones here and we're going to slide this over until it matches. See how we can move it around. And we're just going to tweak these two a little bit. Maybe that's a little far. And go back a little bit there. And what we're trying to do is match the colors in between, or just the tones actually, not so much the colors. So we're just kind of matching that to try to make this disappear a little bit. And see how these edges now are kind of matching and blending in nicely? Click OK. And we've got the first part of our effect. We're very, very close to our result. But what we want to do now is we're actually going to use some layer masks to really finalize what we're doing here. So we've got the two layers. We've got a lot of other stuff that's just kind of hanging out there. That's utility stuff. So what we're going to do is work on masks on these two layers, and each of these masks is going to do a different thing. So I'm going to add a layer mask to this layer. To do that, go down to the New Layer Mask button, click on there, and you'll see a mask will apply, and it'll do nothing. So what we want to do, though, is we want to start hiding the, some of this top layer here and allowing some of this face to come through underneath and start blending this. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this to black, change it to black, grab a brush, go up the top here, and what we want to do is just grab a soft edge brush. Notice that the ones that are kind of uh, got the gradient in there rather than the solid one, that's a soft edge brush. And I'm just going to click away. Now, I've got the opacity turned on for pressure sensitivity. Now, if you don't have a pressure sensitive tablet, that's okay. Just use the uh, mouse and just change the size. Now we can change the brush size by left bracket key will make it smaller, right bracket key will make it bigger. So I'm going to go down and make it quite big and I'm going to just with a very light touch. Now if you're using a mouse, you might want to use a lower opacity like 20 or 30 percent and slowly build it up. Because I'm using pressure, I can just kind of play around with the pressure and kind of build this up a little bit. So what I'm trying to do is just kind of blend this in a little bit. Maybe the ears. I'm going to hit the left bracket key, make these ears come through a little bit more. So we're kind of blending these together. So we're bringing back more of the face. Now, if you've gone too far with the face and you're bringing in the eyes and stuff like that that you really don't want to show, just switch the colors by hitting the X key and take the white brush and we can paint that out. So what we're doing is looking at the top factory layer and we're painting this in. And what I don't really want is the eyes showing because if you look on the... Uh, the original artwork from True Detective, you won't see the eyes. You'll just see the bottom part of the face. So we're just kind of blending these together. We've got a pretty nice blend going on there. And um, I'm kind of liking that. So you can just switch these backwards and forwards to blend it. So just remember, if you want to see more of the face, paint with black. If you want to see more of the factory, paint with white. So, you know, we can kind of go in there and notice that. It shows the face. I'm going to undo that. X, switch it around. And now we'll start to see more of the background. I'm actually painting this out just to make it a little bit more matching with the background color. So I'm just kind of going over here. Now, one of the things you might want to do is actually make some of the smoke travel outside of the face. Now, you really can't do this by painting on here. What we need to do is remember this is clipped inside this group here. If I hide the background... Um, over here, you'll see we've got this area here. It's clipped inside the bounds of this object. So if we want to paint outside of bounds or go out of bounds, we need to extend that mask. So what I'm going to do is just turn these layers back on. And really, we only need that top layer. It's actually working fine, but we'll, we'll turn the back one on anyway just for safety. Um, and that will actually probably make a difference when we start to paint here. So with this mask, go down to where the face is or the head and now what you want to do is paint with white. So I'm going to grab a bigger brush and notice as I paint with white, it allows some of this other stuff to come through. So we're actually letting the boundaries 
we're painting out of bounds now. I'm letting some of the smoke come through. So we're kind of letting this guy blow off steam, so to speak. We could call this image uh, letting off steam. And if we hit the X key and go back, I'm going to drop it down a little bit. Just want to get rid of the little chimneys that we've gone over. There we go. And just kind of painting that out a little bit. So you get a general idea of what we're doing here. So we're kind of going over the bounds and we're starting to create more of this kind of double exposure effect. So this is looking good. There's a couple of things though that I really want to change to match our artwork a little bit more. It's, it's looking pretty good structurally. But what I want to do now is I want to add a little bit of color in here. Because if you actually look at the artwork, you'll notice that you'll see some reds in the shadow. So I want to add red, but just in the shadow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the very top here and I'm going to create a new layer. Actually go there, just above these guys. And we're going to create a new layer. And what we're going to do with this layer is we're going to make it red. So we're going to go down here and we're going to grab a uh, color. I'm going to change it to color blend mode. Now we're going to grab red. Grab a solid red color here. And now we've set red for the foreground. I'm going to hit the alt backspace key. And what I'm doing right now is I'm filling this with red. Now you're not going to see it because it's under there. Let's pull it over the top. There we go. And now you can see this red is going down and kind of covering everything. Notice because of the blend mode, it's not showing in these areas where there's no color. It's only showing where there would be some tones in here. But what we want to do is make this only show in the shadows, not in the highlights. So what we're going to do is use advanced blending. So we're going to go down here, choose the effects. Under effects, choose blending options. And here's our advanced blend modes. So what we want to do is we want to hide this in the highlights, midtones, just showed in the shadows. So we're going to move this slider over. This is the blend if sliders. So when we go to there, notice, notice right now it's not showing. If we go there, it's going to just suddenly show and it's going to be on and off really, really suddenly. So we want to have a gradual transition. Hold the Alt or the Option key, click on the right side of the triangle and split out that triangle. And now we can notice this. We can blend in this transition here and have it just happening in the shadows. There we go. So we've just kind of targeted that red. So we've kind of almost like a duotone effect there. And I'm just going to click OK. And you can see how it just adds a lot of richness to the color. If you like, you can drop the opacity down if it's a little strong. And there we go. I kind of like how that's looking now. That's kind of giving us a very kind of a cool color effect close to what we want. The next thing though we need to do is we need to add some grain on here. This thing really needs some film grain. So I'm going to go and I'm going to grab a new layer. And rather than just click on the new layer right now, I'm going to hold the Alt key or the Option key and then click on the new layer icon. And then we get options here. So we get to do layers with options. So we're going to change the mode to overlay blend mode. Blend mode. Notice that. And now we have this checkbox to fill with 50% gray. Turn it on and we can call this one grain. If you're good and you name your layers, which I highly ever do, uh, we're going to click OK. Notice it doesn't look any different, but what we've got is we've got a layer now filled with gray inside overlay mode. Why did we do that? The reason we did that is because I want to add a film grain, but you can't add grain to transparency. So this is kind of a little extra tip here. And, and as you're probably noticing in this tutorial, I'm adding a lot of tips. You're going to learn a lot of different techniques. Now, I've subscribed to our channel here. Just click the subscribe button and you'll be sure you're going to just get all kinds of tips and stuff as we go. So anyway, let's continue. I'm going to choose filter and I'm going to go down to noise and I'm going to choose add noise. So I'm going to click the add noise here and notice now we can add this grain in here. I'm using Gaussian and monochromatic and we can make this really uh, strong. Or we can reduce it. So we're looking for a kind of a film look. And I'm going to click OK. And notice now it's definitely getting a lot more of that kind of filmic look right now. One of the things I'm going to do is just add some type in here. And uh, let me just choose a color. I'm going to grab our uh, picker here. And I'm going to grab that color there. And notice that that will set that to the foreground color. Grab the type tool. And I'm just going to click in here. And I'm going to type in Photoshop cafe because this is something if you actually look at the um i can't spell by the way i don't know if you knew that um actually i can't spell i just can't type <laughs> let's go and change this from photoshop let's change it to cafe and there we go and right now i'm using avenue next 
uh, condensed and I'm actually going to change that to ultra light. So select all of that, change that to an ultra light. And one of the other things I want to do too is if you actually look at the um, graphics itself, there's more spacing in between the letters. So I'm going to just go over here and I'm going to increase the spacing here to about 75 or maybe more. We can just click and drag. There we go. About there is looking right. And we can just kind of drag that down to, you know, I don't know, about there. And I'm just going to make it a little bigger. If you look at the actual artwork there, it's got a little bit more heavy and contrasty, so we're going to fix that right now. So I'm just going to hit the tab key, bring this back. What I need to do is just kind of push up the levels a little bit in these midtones. So I've selected that top layer there, and I'm going to go under our layers here. We're going to go under the uh, levels. We're going to apply some levels. And so there's our levels adjustment there. And what I'm going to do is just kind of push this in a little bit. See that? It's kind of plugs things up a little bit, but it looks a little closer to what you see of that artwork. And I kind of like that. That's looking good. All right. So there we go. That's the effect. So I hope you like this. Uh, check out photoshopcafe.com. At the bottom there, I've got a link where you can go in and see the written steps in this tutorial, plus the photos that you can download to play around with. And uh, also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Um, it's people like you when you subscribe enable me to do this. So uh, please do that. And I do a new tutorial every week. So I'm going to be sending all kinds of cool tutorials to you. Uh, don't forget to follow me at Twitter at Photoshop Cafe. And uh, until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.